damn it, I lost an ATM last month. My whole entire ATM empire is falling down. I'm just kidding. But yeah, I really did lose an ATM last month. I lost an ATM because there was a hiccup with the store owner in the city. Basically, where I had my ATM, the store owner got sued by the city because we placed an ATM where it wasn't supposed to be placed at. Not my fault, the owner's fault. They're suing him for like $2,000, not on us. We wiped our hands clean. It is what it is. But now I am down an ATM. And this isn't the first time that this has actually happened to me. This is actually the, I would say the second, third time that this has actually happened to me. And that's what I tell people when you come into the ATM business, you are going to lose some ATMs. That's why you have to continue to grow because if something happens to the store owner, to the ATM or some hiccup or hurricane or whatever it is happens, you are going to lose business. When you're playing in this whole entire business world, things are going to happen. Losing an ATM is one of those things that can possibly happen. Now, I own 12 ATMs and I vault over 20 ATMs for somebody else. The ATM that I have is in a tattoo shop that I lost. It was placed outside the tattoo shop. And honestly, I don't even feel bad that I lost this ATM because it wasn't even producing numbers. You see, back in like 2021, the store that I had these machines, they were doing really great numbers. But the owner decided to shut down the store and remodel the whole entire thing. And it was about one, two, three months that I lost almost half of my income from the ETNs because those were my heavy hitters at the time. And the owner remodeled this whole entire thing. It took like three months for him to finish. And my ATMs weren't even producing any money. I was just like, what the hell? So that was the first time when I figured this out where if I don't have more ATMs, my income can possibly go down. And this is one of those things that I was already expecting to possibly happen. As a matter of fact, I'm actually happy that I lost my ATM because now I have an ATM that I can place somewhere else. So I'm actually looking for a new location for this new ATM. But this isn't the first time that this has happened to me. This is actually the second time or maybe third time because before this one, I actually lost another ATM. I lost another ATM due to the fact that one, someone broke into it. Two, that store closed down. And this wasn't my ATM. I was actually vaulting this ATM for somebody else. So I was vaulting an ATM for my business partner and it was placed outside a coffee shop. This coffee shop, I don't know what happened, but it went bankrupt, it closed down and we had to pull the ATM because it was no longer even a business. We had no one to play. We had no electricity. It was a shit show. So I lost another source of income. One pattern that I've noticed is that usually the ATMs that shut down or I lose the location is because the business just sucks. If the business is doing bad, like you can see it in the numbers in the ATMs, you have to realize that one day this ATM may no longer be there. And I've noticed this pattern being in this business for more than three years. There are going to be times where that slow location can possibly no longer be there and you're going to have to find a new location for it. So I'm accustomed to losing ATMs. You are going to lose ATMs and that's why you have to continue to grow. You have to continue to look out for new locations and you have to build relationships. Because even though I did lose an ATM, I actually gained two more ATM locations. And that's what I really want to talk about today. Because the most important thing in this whole entire business, in any business whatsoever, is getting relationships. You see, the reason I've been able to grow from four ATMs to over 30 ATMs in the span of less than three years is due to relationships. I have grown my entire ATM empire just through relationships. And I am solely grateful of everyone that I've come into contact with because they are the reason why I am where I am today. That's why I tell people I have never been able to do this alone. No way. I cannot do anything alone. I always look for partnerships. I always look for mentors. I always look for people who are doing better than me because when I do what they tell me to do, something happens and things fall into place how they're supposed to. You see, back when I started my whole entire ATM empire, I only had four ATMs and I bought it off of somebody else. And it was with a special contract that I would soon buy another pair of ATMs. But when that store location closed down, I was able to get two more vaulting locations for my relationship with the business person, my business partner that I went ahead and bought the ATM locations from. He gave me two locations because we had in our agreement that if these locations were performing within the six months, he would have to cough up another location. And he did. And he was a person of his word. He didn't screw me. And that's how I started to get into the vaulting game. 
through relationships through him. And I knew this guy had over 150 locations. And I'm all like, I'm going to go ahead and stay close to this guy, show him that I work hard, that I'm willing to put in the work because I've noticed that people who are doing way better than me, when you show them your worth ethic, when you show them that you have what it takes to get on their level, they will respect you. They will treat you better. They will want you to grow with them. Even myself, like when people come to me and they tell me, oh, I want to change my life. I want to do better. If you come to me with the worth ethic and you show me that you are really about it and you really want to change your life, if you do little things for me, I will give you more work. I will give you handouts. Successful people want to see other people grow. I don't know what it is. It's like a human thing. I think it's a more of like a man thing where you always want to leave your legacy to somebody else. Because throughout my whole entire life growing up, I've always had mentors. I've always had mentors that wanted to teach me something. Someone that was really, really good at their skill, really, really good at their trade. And they saw me and they wanted to take me on as I like to call it like their son, right? They wanted to take me on as their son. They would always call me mijo, like and treat me as their son. And they would basically make me into their meaning me. It happened to me when I was a referee. It happened to me when I was at the pizza place. It happened to me when I was at T-Mobile. It happened to me when I was in the sales game. And it happened to me in the ATM. It's always been happening to me where every single time I created a new partnership, when I found a mentor, I accelerated my growth always. And that's how I was able to grow my whole entire ATM empire through relationships. So me losing this ATM last month, yeah, it sucks. It sucks that I had to yank out an ATM because it's hours into doing that stuff. People don't realize that this whole ATM thing is not passive. It's not passive at all. It's an entire business that requires time. Me losing that ATM, it's not just, okay, the ATM closed down. No, I have to go yank out that ATM, unbolt it from the cement. We had to destroy cement. We had to place new cement. And luckily I have a business partner who helped me out because if it was up to me with everything else that I have going on, I don't even know how I was going to be able to do that. Because it requires time running this type of business. And that's why really what I want to talk to you about today is partnerships. You have to create partnerships when it comes to running your life, running business, or doing anything that you want to do in life. You cannot do this thing alone. And I get it because one time when I was younger, I thought that I knew everything and that I could do everything on my own and I don't need anybody just like every young person. No, dude, you can't do anything alone. You cannot. I am not in the place that I am today by myself. I will never say that. I am in the place that I am today because of everybody else around me. I am not self-made. Never will I claim to be self-made because I am made by every person that I have surrounded myself with. And that's why I tell people, you want to surround yourself with winners. Surround yourself with people who are doing things. There's going to be losers and there's going to be winners. You have to surround yourself with people who are winners. Those loser friends that I like to call them, you have to slowly bump them out of your life and start hanging out with the winner friends. But you're only going to get winner friends if you yourself start transforming into a winner, start proving yourself. Because that's how you build long-lasting relationships. Now, me losing that ATM, yeah, sure, I lost that ATM. Honestly, it wasn't even making that much money. It was bringing me in like... $50 a month, which is nothing. Really, if your ATM is not making more than 60 transactions a month, it is a boo-boo location and you need to find the location to move it. And that's what happened even like two, three months before that. I had an ATM location in a small little thrift store for like four months and that ATM was actually losing me money. How was I losing money? It's not like someone was robbing me or anything like that, but everything costs money. People don't realize that when it comes to running a business, there are unforeseen costs that you have to take into account. In the ATM business, I like to call it mostly time cost. There's time that is involved in running this ATM business. Say, for example, the last location that I had to transfer, it was in a small little thrift store, and this thrift store was barely doing 10 locations a month. I was losing money because of the service fee. So all these ATMs, they have almost like a wireless connection for your phone where you connect it to the ATM, and that's how I'm able to run my whole entire business through my phone. Well, this machine, it cost me $20 a month to run the cellular service on my ATMs. It was barely making me $10 a month. I was losing $10 a month on this location, plus the time it took 
to go over there, plus the unforeseen cost of the thousand dollars that I had into that machine that I can use those thousand dollars for something else. And that's how you have to look at business, right? It's called opportunity cost. Why would I go ahead and do this when I can rather do this? So there's going to be times where there's going to be locations where you're going to have to move them. You're going to lose some locations. Stores are going to shut down and that's just part of the business. Luckily for me, I have a really good partnership with my mentor, my ATM mentor. Honestly, he found out about me losing the location way before me. He's the one that broke the news to me. And I remember he called me. I was having a really bad day that day. And he called me and he was uh, like trying to be really nice because he's trying to break the news to me. And I can hear it in your voice. I can hear it in somebody's voice when they have some bad news to tell me. And I just just spit it out. It was all like, we're going to have to yank this location because the city's about to sue this store on it because it was never supposed to be there. And honestly, I call bullshit on that whole entire ticket because it wasn't even on public property. But I think cops just have a quota to me and they got the store owner. And honestly, something I really don't wish bad on people but this store owner that i have these atm locations he's kind of an asshole so he kind of deserved it and even one of those locations where he makes more money than i do but it's because it's in a prime location and i don't mind it because it is in a prime location so uh, and he gives me a lot of other locations so it is what it is it happened he got i don't know what's going on over there i think he's clearing that out with the city we fixed everything we yanked the location and now I have to find a new location for that ATM. Fortunately, I've kind of been setting myself up for success since year one, where year one, I'm like, I'm going to learn the business. Year two, I'm going to try to grow the business. And year three, I'm going to try to build relationships. One thing that I did back in December before my year ended was I created goals. Every single year before the year ends, around like November, December is when I start to create goals for myself. And one of the goals that I created for myself this year in 2023 was to double my ATM location. Well, how I set myself up was by making myself valuable. You see, my business partner, he runs over so many ATMs. I don't even know how many, but he has five, 10 times as many ATMs that I have. And I knew this. And I told myself, I want to stay close to this guy because he's going to be the reason why I double my business. Because in this business, it's a capital intense game. And I don't have a lot of capital that is needed. Like the capital that I already have in my business is a lot. People don't realize that this whole entire ATM business requires a lot of capital. And I only have so much capital. Luckily, I do have money coming in because of my high ticket sales um, partnership that I have. So all my money that I make for my sales, I throw it back into the ATM company. But when you start dealing with these high level machines, you need a lot of capital. And growing over there to Ventura, growing over here in LA, you need like, just so you guys get an idea, you need over $50,000 to run the operations that I currently run. That's not a little bit of money. That's a lot of money for just the average person to yank out. That's what I tell people. If you want to get into the ATM business, you better have some capital coming in because it's not for everyone. That's why I tell everyone, stay away from the ATM business because it requires a lot of capital. It's a high risk game. And unless you have a lot of locations, this game does not make sense for the average Joe. Last year, I set myself up with my business partner and I told him, hey, if you need anything, let me know. Like I'm here. I'm trying to grow my business. I'm trying to take this seriously. As you can see, I'm not your regular Joe Schmo. I can get things done. And like I mentioned in the last podcast of how I grew my ATM business, I made myself valuable. And then an opportunity came about where he lost his best employee. And now he's treating me as his meaning me, trying to teach me the business. And I'm slowly growing. Now we have plans to grow this business way bigger in the future. And so I'm excited for next year because next year, this whole entire thing is going to take off even to the a next level that Wow. You, I'm, I, I'll tell you guys in another show of what we have planned for the ATM business, but this partnership that I have with my mentor in the ATM game is going to take me to the next level. And I'm thinking about my next level goals for the ATM business because currently I am capped at where I'm at. But soon enough, with everything I have in place, things are going to get better in the ATM business and I'm going to be cash flowing ridiculously and have other things in plan. And I'll slowly share all of this with you because it's just too much to share in one video because in today's video i really want to just talk to you guys about partnerships because that's the reason why i got to where i'm at today because yeah i lost the location but i planted a seed right i got my locations over there in ventura and i got my locations over here in la 
I told him, hey, if you have more locations, I can help you out. So even though I lost this location here in LA, my business partner, I brought it up to him again. Like, hey, if you have more locations, I got more time. I got more time. I can vote more machines for you. And he gave me two more new locations. So yeah, I lost one location, but I just gained two more locations that same weekend. So I am actually winning because now these two locations, one of them is a heavy hitter. Another one is doing double the numbers that my old location was even doing. So I'm actually winning. Yeah, I took an L, but I got a bigger W through my partnership. So now I am up over, I don't even know how many ATMs I have at this point. Honestly, if I had to think about it, what is it like 10 plus 20? I have, a, I have about like 35 to 40 locations. And here's something that you want to understand. When you start growing in the ATM business, you're going to get to a level where you can't own 100% of the machines. You have to create partnerships. And I've even heard this in a podcast of this one guy that got into the business and he actually raised money and he does the same thing that I do. I buy ATM locations in big routes where I buy them off of other people that are trying to get out of the business. But in order for you to do that, you have to have some deep pockets and relationships is how you do that. Yeah, you can make the most amount of money by owning the location, putting in your own money and getting a high surcharge. But if you want to grow your business and double your business, you have to create partnerships through vultures. Vultures such as myself. A vulture is somebody that puts money into the machine. If you're new to this whole entire business, do not start off as a vulture because you have to learn the business yourself. If it wasn't for me owning over 10 ATNs for myself, there's some things that you wouldn't know how to do if you just started off as a vulture. And us experienced people, like my business partner, he wouldn't just want to get any other vulture because I have even seen it in our group chat in the Facebook group where people try to just be vultures. And if you don't know anything about the ATM business, you don't know how to change out a card reader, you don't know how to change out a screen, you don't know how to fix a CDU, all these little things make you more valuable as a vulture. And if you're going to start off as a vulture like, and you don't know anything about the business, first, get your own machine, get a couple more machine. I think getting three, five locations is fairly, fairly easy. After that, then you can start servicing as a vulture. And some people make their money just purely in vaulting. There's so many different ways to make money in the ATM business. And it's all through partnerships, through like vultures, through just being the ISO, to owning the machine, to just servicing machines. All these little things are just partnerships that you can create in the ATM industry. And that's why next year, one of the things I actually have planned out for myself is in February, there's actually a conference in Vegas for just ATM owners. And I want to go out there and I want to network because going to the next level is going to require me to network with people who are even doing bigger numbers than us and that are out of state because this ATM game, yeah, some people say that, oh, ATM is like, the ATM game is dead. No, it's not. It's not going to die. It's not going to die anytime soon. I've done a ton of research because I was skeptical myself, like who uses cash, but you'll be surprised at the people that use cash. You'll be surprised at the benefits that having an ATM actually gives store owners. So I don't believe this ATM business is going to go anywhere. And we could talk about that in another podcast because those are some really insightful things that I want to share with the ATM community with people who want to look into the business and actually business owners because they will benefit from knowing all this information as well. All this whole entire industry, it's all partnerships, even with like my store owners, right? The people that I have my ATM locations, I don't just look at them as another person that has my ATM. Like, no, these guys are my partners. I treat them as my partners. I take them gifts every now and then. I say hi. I try to build a relationship with them because there are times where not, not only are you going to lose your location from the store closing down, but you will lose your location if you were a bad ATM owner because there are some really bad ATM owners where they grow so big, they don't have the time to vote their machines. They don't have the time to service their machine. And they build really bad relationships with these store owners. There are store owners in the ATMs that I have in Ventura. This company that we are working with, the people who are servicing them, I don't know what kind of relationship they had with them, but before I came into the picture, they did not have a happy experience with their old vultures or their ATM owners. I came in there and they treat me really nice. I have a store that's like a liquor store where I go in there and they give me like free water, free energy drinks because I'm, they know that I'm driving and it's through the relationships, through me just being able to say, hey, how you doing? Talking about their day, talking about their experience in life, just me building 
and being a human. And that's what this whole entire business world is, is just building relationships. And one of the best quotes that I've ever gotten from the people who I look up to, is, which is Brad Lee, he said, the more hands you shake, the more money you make. And ever since I've heard that, I've noticed that the more friends I make in the world, the more networks that I create for myself, the more money I do make, the more opportunities I make. That's why I tell people I love talking to people. I love making friends because there are doors that open for me that would not open if it wasn't for me being friends with a certain individual. And that's why I try to keep my relationship really almost handoffish to a lot of people because I have power that I cannot just give to you because you have to earn it. I earned a lot of my relationships through certain people. I have paid for a lot of my relationships with other people. Like these ATMs, I didn't just get handed my whole entire ATM relationship. I worked for my ATM relationship. I showed that I'm a valuable person. I showed that I can bring you value. I showed him that I have the worth ethic, that I'm somebody to be trusted with. Because think about it. Think about the relationship I created with my ATM partner. This guy lets me borrow his money to put into other machines. Do you know how much trust you have to have in somebody to give them $30,000 and up? That is a lot of trust. I don't earn my trust just like this. I earn my trust by showing them that I am a man of my word, that I'm willing to put in the work, that I show up on time and I do what I have to do to get things done. Because one thing that I've noticed is that there's not a lot of valuable people out there. There's not a lot of people who think the way I think. There's a lot of people who need instructions to do what needs to be done. Not everyone's wired the way I'm wired or wired the way a lot of entrepreneurs are wired where you can solve problems. A lot of people don't know how to solve problems. That's one skill that I did get over the years is learning how to solve problems. And it's one of those skills that make you valuable is learning how to solve problems. I know how to solve problems just because I know how to put one and one together. And it's a skill that most people don't have. And I don't know how I gained it. Maybe it's through all the jobs that I've had over the years or every book that I've read since the beginning of this whole entire journey of mine, learning how to solve problems, learning how to solve other people's problems is how you build relationships. So getting relationships, making yourself valuable, solving other people's problems is how you can grow any other business. And that's actually one of the things that I'm doing currently right now is I have a special project going in the works for next year where it's another partnership. I have a partnership with another person who wants to take their business to the next level. And if I put in all the knowledge pieces that I've gathered over the years, this partnership should be bringing in my next seven figure business. And I'm so opportunistic on this opportunity because honestly, everything is falling into place correctly. And I have to just the little puzzle pieces in order and things are going to go great. But partnerships, partnerships is how I make my money and how I live my lifestyle. That's another thing that I want to go ahead and talk about today. I think one of the biggest issues people have with creating partnerships, especially for guys, I've noticed this little trend that guys have. Every single male or guy has this competitive inner self where we're just competitive. Guys are really, really competitive. And a lot of them, they always want to be number one. And it's something that I used to have and I used to be really prideful in it where I know what's better. I know what to do. I'm going to do this all by myself and I want to be the CEO and I want to run things. And a lot of guys are exactly like that. Dude, I don't care about that anymore. I don't care whether I'm the CEO of a company. I don't care if I'm number one. I don't care if I'm the face of something. I don't. I really don't. At the point that I'm at now, I just like my lifestyle. I want to live my lifestyle where I have the time freedom, I can make money, and I can do cool shit. I don't need to be the CEO of a company. Like even the ATM partnership that I created. The way this is built with me and him is when we were going to the Ventura route to go ahead and grow the business, we had a really good deep conversation and I told him, hey look, you have a skill and you treat this business like no other person. He has systems and processes that I wouldn't even understand if it wasn't for him explaining this and showing me. And honestly, I'm really grateful for the opportunity that I have with him because he is showing me and I'm learning how to scale properly and not make the mistakes that he made. He did all the mistakes. And that's why I tell people, pay for mentorship, find a mentor because you can skip all these errors. But one thing that I told him is, hey, look, you have a really great business. I'm really good at this. Let me help you with this because I know you lack in that, which is like marketing websites and all these other things that we have planned for the ATM business. But I want to run under you. I want to run under you. I want to run under the business, so-called merchant solutions. And I want to have my own 
ATMs, but I want to run them under you. Where like, let's say, for example, I have a customer and they have a problem. They're going to call you because you have an employee that answers the phone. You can service them. All these little details. You run it as a company, I run under you. That's why I treat this business almost like real estate, right? I have my locations. I have locations that I service, but they're all ran under him. And we kind of run everything under him because I don't need to be number one. I don't need to say that I'm an owner of an ATM business like yeah I'll tell it because it's a good icebreaker to a lot of people but I don't care I don't care if I'm not the owner I don't care I'm still making money I'm making a good amount of money just being a number two and a lot of people don't realize that you can make a lot of money just being a valuable number two being a valuable number two goes a long way because it still gives you the freedom to do what you want to do that's why I tell people, you don't always have to go ahead and build a company. You don't always have to be the main head. You can go ahead and be a number two and you'll be living like no other. Even the relationships that I have in my sales game, right? Most of you guys don't know this, but I do high ticket sales, but I sell mostly roofs. Roofs are a high ticket item that can be sold. And I created a partnership with the roofing company that gives me appointments. And I go out to this appointment and my job is to sell them and close them, right? After the selling and closing, I pass it on to them. They take care of the production. I do my job. They do their job. And it's a partnership. It's a partnership between us, right? I can't do this alone. I can't sell roofs. I can't run a whole entire roofing company by myself. I mean, I can. I know the whole ins and out of the roofing industry. I can do it. I know I can. But what does it really take to be a roofing owner, right? You have to produce. You have people to manage. You have all these things that you have to do. I know what kind of lifestyle I want. I want a lifestyle where I make a ton of money. I get to travel two, three, four times a year. I get to do whatever I want on my time. I'm focusing on this. I want to be an influencer. I want to be on camera and I want to do this. This is where I want to be at, right? I don't want to go ahead and run a roofing company. I don't want to go ahead and run an ATM company. I do want my hands in there, right? I want partnerships. I want to be a shareholder. If anything, that's how I, I, I saw this, this podcast the other day from this guy who's a billionaire. And he said where he makes a lot of these companies, he invests in a lot of these companies, he always tries to find A players, A players to run the company, to be the CEO. And he doesn't like to step in as the CEO unless he has to. I know I can be a CEO of all these companies. I know I can do that. But why would I want to do that? There are times where I am not best at certain things and I know that. I know that about myself. I know what I'm good at and I know when other people are good at other things. When it comes to this ATM thing, He's good at like the whole ATM business structures and all these things. And he's been doing it for a really long time. When it comes to getting sales, that's where I'm good at. When it comes to marketing, that's where I'm good at. When it comes to communications, that's where I'm good at. That's where I'm better at than most people. And that's where I come in. When it comes to putting a vision together, when it comes to creating new plans, that's where I'm good at. I'm a visionary, if anything, a communicator. That's where I'm good at. That's my skills. Some other people have better skills than me in certain things. Like I'm not good at everything. And that's what you have to realize is that you're not going to be good at everything and you have to create partnerships and create these partnerships on where you lack at. Because when you create a partnership with somebody else that is better at things than what you are, you can grow even faster. And that's how I've been able to grow my whole entire ATM empire. That's how I've been able to grow my roofing sales empire. And every other empire that I'm going to create is through partnerships. I don't want to be a lone wolf. I don't like making money by myself. I don't. I, it, it sucks. It's sad. It's lonely. It's, uh, no, I don't. I don't like that. I like making money with friends. I like making money with other people because it's more fun. It makes this whole entire life game so much more fun. And I'd rather make money with friends. I'd rather travel with friends. Doing things with friends, with partners is where it's at. At least that works for me. That's what I think. I may be wrong. There's some people out there that want to do things on their own because I've met people. I've met sharks. I've met sharks that they do not care. They do not care about creating a partnership. All they care is about money in their pocket. They've tried to come to me and they've screwed me. And like, it is what it is. Like, there's people like that. I'm not like that. I don't care. Like, I'll share money with people. I've done it. I did it last month where I sold the project for somebody else. And that project was honestly a shitty project. And we were going to split the money. And I told him, you know what? Like this project is shitty. Keep it. I made no money on that project. It was very little money. It was like 500 bucks. And I told him, keep it. I sold it. I did what I had to do in the beginning. And I told him to keep it. Because for me, what I value the most, I don't value money. I value more my partnership. Now that partnership that I did, I showed him that I value him. I value his business and I value his trust even more. Money doesn't mean shit. It doesn't. And now because I did that, we have new plans going in place. 
and in the beginning of either this year and at the end, the end of this year or beginning of next year, things are going to be rolling out really quickly and really amazingly. I'm, I'm excited for that too. So I have a couple of projects going on at the same time. And people don't realize, yeah, I do a bunch of different things, but I'm not doing them by myself. I couldn't do them by myself. I have a bunch of these partners that are doing everything with me. I'm not doing anything by myself. I'm creating partnerships. And that's why lately what I've been thinking about is how this whole entire business thing starts off when you're barely starting in the beginning. In the beginning, I say you start off as a solopreneur where it's just you. You think you can do it yourself. And now that I look at businesses and how they're like made, LLCs, sole proprietorships, partnerships, corporations, things like that, I understand it a little bit better now. Where, yeah, you start off as a solopreneur or so, solo, pro, pro, I don't know how to say that word, sole proprietor, right? Everyone starts off there. Imagine like realtors, right? And then you start off as an LLC, but like a partnership, usually with somebody else. And then you start off as a company. I did that. I did, I'm doing this and I'm going to that. That's how you scale. That's how you build companies, I would say. That's how you build value and that's how you build, that's how you make money. You make money with other people and that's that's the craziest part of this whole entire thing when i heard brad lee say the more hands you shake the more money you make i thought that guy was crazy i'm like dude i don't need anybody i can do this all by myself like there's no way there's no way you can do this all by yourself you need friends you need partners you need people that know things that you don't know and the faster you get more friends the faster you get more valuable friends the faster you grow and that's why to end all of this, one thing that I want to encourage you is to make more friends. And every single time I make these podcasts, I want to teach you something valuable, something that you can go ahead and start taking action now so you can leave this podcast taking action and implementing something into your life that can actually change your life because this is what I do and this is what works for me. One thing that I noticed is a lot of people have trouble making friends. You have trouble making partnerships. Well, the very first thing in order for you to create partnerships is you have to be valuable yourself. How do you become valuable? Well, you have to get a skill that is valuable to somebody. What is that? You can do sales. You can do editing. You can do marketing. You can do something, a high value skill. And you can just Google this, look up a skill, become really good at that and become valuable. And maybe you're just valuable with your time, right? Maybe you're just valuable with your time and labor. Become valuable by just being there for somebody. And maybe you're not going to be making the money that you want to be making, but it's a start, right? You start by becoming valuable. And then putting yourself in a position to make friends. Where do you make friends? Well, you're not going to make friends sitting at home doing nothing, watching Netflix, playing video games. You're going to make friends by creating content, showing people what you do, showing people your skill. That's how you create partnerships, DMing people, becoming a source of value to somebody else or going to events. I've actually found that going to events is the best place to network with people to best place to create relationships in fact i've met a lot of my close friends through events through events and that's why this weekend hopefully 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 i get to go to this event in utah it's called limitless arena i'm actually going with one of my best friends because i believe this is going to be the event that can take us to the next level so i have an agenda i have an agenda and really it's up to to see whether I can move an appointment on that Saturday and see if I can fly out that day. And I'm going to this event where I'm going to meet a bunch of these entrepreneurs and a lot of other people who are either at level zero, level one, or even level 10. And I just want to go ahead and meet friends. And now I've noticed that my way to break the ice with a lot of people is saying, yeah, I own over 30 ATMs. I do high ticket sales and you, I, I'm doing shit. When you start doing shit, when you start saying that, oh, I'm doing this, 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 is that, People are more open to wanting to be your friend. So you have to do cool shit. If you do cool shit, getting friends and building relationships is so much easier. Because when I remember when I used to go to these events and I didn't have anything, like, what would I say? Like, I'm just starting out. I'm doing this. It's crazy because when people tell me, oh, I just came here. I'm barely starting. And like, as much as like, <laughs> it hurts me to kind of think this way. I'm all like, dude, I'm like, fuck, this guy is no kid loser. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I hate saying that, but it's because I've noticed that almost 80% of the time, people just don't do anything. 80% of the time, people don't do anything. And it's really hard to meet other people. And that's why now you have to pay to get into certain rooms to meet these high valuable people, people that are in there. And I've paid for high valuable people's advice. 
So go to these small little events, even if it's like cheap ticket, just go. Maybe you meet your business partner. Maybe you meet somebody who had the same similar story to you. Maybe you build a business with you. That's why building community, being a part of communities is really worthwhile. I'm always encouraging people to meet other people, to be part of communities, to pay for mentorship, to pay for partnerships. Do whatever it is you have to do to build your tribe. Build your tribe so you can grow with other people because you cannot do this alone. So hopefully I get to move my agenda around for Saturday so I can go out there in Utah and meet some other people. I'm going to try to take some shorts um, for you guys so I can uh, introduce you to my new friends that I possibly meet over there. We'll see if I go. I don't know. But I did buy the ticket. I have a ticket. I just don't have a plane ticket nor a plan to stay there. So we're going to figure it out. I always figure it out. I build the plane while it's in the air. We're going to figure it out. Hopefully, if God wants me to, I will be in Salt Lake, Utah next Saturday. You guys will probably hear about it in a couple podcast outs. If I do go, if I don't go, then it is what it is. My business partner is going, so I'm excited for him because this is me pushing him, pushing him to meet other valuable people. And that's why even this, even this, think about it. Think about it. If he goes to the event and I don't go, he learns everything that I didn't get to learn. But because I'm his friend, because we're partners, you don't think I'm going to ask about the event? You don't think he's going to teach me about the event? That's the key right there. You get to learn at an accelerated rate when you have partners, when you have friends. You get to learn faster. And sometimes you don't even have to pay. But guys, I still don't have a name for this podcast. I think I want to call it the hustle gene. I still don't know. If you guys have name recommendations, let me know. If not, we're just going to be rambling on. I am going to start structuring this thing because I just wanted to get the hang of me talking on camera a couple times. But I've gotten used to it. But I need to create a structure of kind of topics that I want to talk about, do a little bit more research. Right now, I'm kind of just talking to you guys about what's happening in my life. So that's really, really easy because I have cool shit going on in my life. So little by little, when I want to teach you guys something, something that I've learned in the past, something I'm going to learn, something that I'm going to do in the future, I'll probably structure it a little bit better. Anyways, if you guys found value in this podcast, if you guys have name recommendations for this podcast, if you guys have anything you guys want me to talk about, um, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you guys next time.